Please welcome Josh. Woo! What mic? Does this work? Yes. This works. Does this work? No. Yes. yes. Hi, everyone. That was a very hectic thing. Let's, for my sake, if anyone else is. You good? Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties, so I guess I'm filling in right now and we're swapping the order of Kathleen and me. So if you're here for design systems and, and carnivals and such, I apologize. Uh, that's next. But okay. I, the, the actual title of this talk is the best TypeScript features you're not using because that's clickbaity and fun and I regret that. It's really the best TypeScript features, well, some of the best TypeScript features, they're all great, that you might not be using. Just for my reference, so I know the crowd, please, show of hands, who here uses TypeScript? A amazing. Not everyone, and I want to make that clear, not everyone is using TypeScript, and that's fine, but I, I'm happy either way. I'm Josh. Does anyone here use TypeScript ESLint? Woo! Woo! Yay! Four hands. Um, <laughs> two from the same person. I'm, I'm a full-time open source maintainer which means that instead of working on like, a company's stuff, I generally work on open source things. I'm independent and I work on a few projects, TypeScript ESLint, the tooling that lets you run standard JS stuff such as ESLint and Pretty or on TypeScript is my main thing. I also recently joined the ESLint and Mocha teams. Yes, Mocha still exists. If you haven't heard of it, it's old. <laughs> That's fine. But we're talking about TypeScript. Who's ready to talk about TypeScript? Yes! Woo! Amazing. TypeScript. TypeScript will document your code. TypeScript will, TypeScript will fix your bugs. It will find stuff in your code. TypeScript uh, will make all your problems go away. It will rewrite your code. What the hell is TypeScript? To define TypeScript, let's first look at JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language woo, that includes some classic syntax like variables and assignment expressions and literals. JavaScript is great. But JavaScript does not provide you a way to define the intent behind your stuff, your values. There's no way in JavaScript to say what this value variable is supposed to be. You could write a comment. First of all, no one does that. <laughs> Second of all, that's not formal. That's not a spec. There's no tool that looks at JavaScript and makes sure the comments line up other than TypeScript. And TypeScript gives you this awesome syntax that lets you define, in this case, a type annotation, saying my variable is only ever going to be a string. That's what TypeScript is. Later on in your code, you might then also use TypeScript, the tool, the programming type checker. For example, you might run it on the CLI, TypeScript command line, TSC, on your file, and it'll let you know, you silly goose, your intent was a string, as you told me, but then you gave it a number your value mismatched your intent, wrong. And then you also might run type, this clicker, ooh. you might run TypeScript in an editor, in an IDE, using what's called the language service, which will give you that lovely, who here loves the red squiggly? Yes. <laughs> Me too, whatever emotion you just conveyed. Uh, it'll give you the red squiggly, and if you hover or focus on it, then you get the nice little drop down. Awesome, that's TypeScript. And I want to dive in on those IDE integrations a little bit because I think that's where TypeScript really shines and is awesome. Now, at this stage, I would give you a live demo, but we don't have the time for that because life is hard. But I will instead tell you TypeScript gives you awesome features where you can right-click on something and rename it. You can go to definition, meaning you can go from a thing to where it was defined. You can go from where it's defined to all references, find all references, a lot of powerful stuff. It works in VS Code and similar on TypeScript and JavaScript files powered by TypeScript. Awesome, let's pretend that was an amazing demo and you're all floored, you're welcome, thank you. I have found the only way to make sure that the demo doesn't go wrong, which is to not give it. <laughs> we'll move on and instead talk about configurability. This is actually an incredibly unique and wonderful and weird thing about TypeScript. TypeScript is super configurable to the point that virtually no other mainstream programming language even comes close to the level of stuff you can change in it. TypeScript lets you exist on a spectrum from weakly typed, which is not intended as an insult. It's just that the types aren't strongly defined, to strongly typed, where everything has a type. And you can configure TypeScript to exist somewhere on that spectrum, what's called gradual typing, it's the technical term, because 
It's totally reasonable if you don't have the time to learn TypeScript, or if you do know it, but you don't have the time to convert your 9001 file code base, you can exist somewhere on the spectrum. And let's, let's take a look at a little bit of these things, because although you don't need to type everything with TypeScript, it works much better when you do. The clicker. So who here has manually hand-edited a tsconfig file? Oh, wow, that is so much more hand than I thought I would get. The tsconfig or TypeScript config file, the thing on the left, where you can define stuff such as compiler options. Compiler options are permissive by default. But if you, let's say, enable no implicit any, does anyone know what's gonna happen to this file? Squiggly lines where? On the, on the user, thank you, yes. No implicit any says, if TypeScript cannot infer what something is from the way it's declared, such as a function parameter, well, it's not gonna look at every place that's used, because what if one of those places is wrong? So instead, it'll let you. This is implicitly, so not explicitly, the any type. Any type is the YOLO, the you only live once, I don't care, I don't know, do whatever the heck you want with it type in TypeScript. As you can imagine, that kind of defeats the purpose of TypeScript. Again, it's fine if you don't have the time to explicitly type everything. Sometimes it's kind of hard. Even I, the person yelling about any, sometimes, sometimes I write in any. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> if you were to you know, correct this with a string, you could also enable the awesome other flag, strict null checks. Who here likes strict null checks? Yes. Who here has written, if argument is null, throw new argument null exception when working in a language such as Java? Yes, that is what's called the billion dollar mistake in industry. The idea that something that is null or undefined in the type system can be passed to something that doesn't think it can be. That's, that's, you can look it up, that's the term. Because people believe it has caused billion or more dollars in damage because of how many bugs. And actually, this code suffers from the billion dollar mistake. Does anyone see it? It's, it, it's a built-in browser API couple. Fun fact, there is a prompt API in browsers that has the native prompt for text and it returns null if the user cancels it. The billion dollar mistake is solved with the strict null checks option because TypeScript will let you know, hey, prompt gives back string or null. You said greet takes in a string, but you gave it something that might be null. My gosh, that's useful. How nice. So you could do like a user and or whatever. Amazing. Now, both of those options and many more great ones are enabled under the strict compiler option. Strict is the catch-all, the umbrella option. Uh, so I highly recommend definitely enable strict if you can. Um, I will post a slide later on that has links to the TypeScript docs that explain all the command line options. There are quite a few. And every other thing I show off, I'm gonna start looking at more tools and edge cases, will also be referenced in that slide later. People are taking photos of me. Thanks. <laughs> Great. TypeScript can do amazing things in the type system, but if something can't be represented in that type system, then you can just go shove it. TypeScript can't help you. <laughs> Let's look at a couple of those cases. First of all, try catch. We've all, who, who's written a try catch statement in their code? Yes. Great. We love throwing exceptions. TypeScript recognizes that it is inherently impossible to provide typing for the thrown error in a catch. It is impossible. It, programming languages have tried and failed to, to make it possible to ensure the type of the general catch-all catch. Because any code can throw an exception or an error. Anything. You would be shocked. For example, uh, let's say that uh, you have an error. TypeScript with the use unknown and catch variables command line option or compiler option would tell you error must be of type unknown, which is the safer version of any, because what happens, what happens if your function throws something that's not an error? We don't even know that error is uppercase E error, because you can throw a string in JavaScript. You could throw null. And then all your error handling code breaks, which means your catch block throws an error. What? That's confusing. Uh, so there, it is actually impossible to tell what type of error is gonna be, which is why in logical, reasonable code, you actually do have to check the type of your error. Horrifying. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, 
This code can throw an error. Does anyone know why this code can throw an error? Or does anyone know the type of error that will be thrown? If any of those Node.js core maintainers were here, they would be yelling about range error. If you set the length property of an array to a number that's negative or too large, the, the runtime is supposed to throw an error. It's called a range error. Horrifying. So that's one edge case that TypeScript can't help you with. Let's talk about uh, arrays also, because arrays are actually a really common cause of throwing an exception or error in many programming languages. Don't we love that? Um, let's take a look at, there we go, this code. We have two users, Dan and Rena, and then we have a function greet, uh, user that takes in an index and greets the user at that index. This code, by TypeScript definition, is type safe. And then if you pass in a number, get user 9001, well, there's no way for that to be, uh, the, the TypeScript doesn't have a way for you to, to tell it that that's not allowed. So if TypeScript actually comes with a compiler option, no unchecked index access, which says if you try to look up an index or a property, an element of an array with a number that we don't know for sure is within the size of that array, we will give you a type error saying that thing might not exist. That sounds kind of cool, right? That sounds kind of nice. This is the most awful thing to work with. I personally do not use this thing because it is extremely restrictive. Numbers are everywhere. And the way to fix it is not always clear. You might, let's say, change your index to be only zero or one. You might, I don't know, do an if statement in your actual logic. I, it's too restrictive for most projects, but if you do a lot of array stuff, it might be useful for you. Okay. Personally, I find that to be too far along the, the side of strongly typed. But right. I'm aware, by the way, that no one really wants to talk about configuration options of your type checker. That's not like the most exciting thing, so we're going to, no more of that. We're instead going to talk about exciting stuff, such as uh, new, new type system keywords. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who here's heard of satisfies? Who here has legitimately used satisfies? It was one-fifth and now one-sixth, actually most of y'all, awesome. Suppose you wanted to declare a variable, palette, I copied this from the TypeScript release notes, and let's say you wanted to ensure that this is strongly typed such that, um, well, for starters, if you mistype the name blue, it should be UE, not EU, that should be a complaint. So let's say that you were to type color as red or green or blue, and then you had RGB as the tuple, so fixed size array with three numbers. And then you said it's a record, which means object of that key and that value. Great, this would let you know, aha, you got, you got your blue wrong. But if you were to fix that, you'd then also get the type error saying two uppercase doesn't exist because you said that every property, every value on this object will be either a string or the tuple. And well, two uppercase doesn't exist on arrays. This is annoying. And for years, we just had to suffer with this in TypeScript. And the problem is that our type is too wide. It encompasses too much stuff. We're saying palette, everything, everything under color could be string or number. But what we really wanted to say was, I just want to make sure, just enforce, make sure it satisfies the type, record, color, RGB, or string. But allow me to provide a more narrow, a less wide type to begin with. That's what satisfies does. Satisfies says, don't expand the type, just make sure it satisfies something wider. Hell yeah. So just to, because it took me a few iterations to physically understand what the hell is satisfies. Satisfies ensures that a value satisfies or adheres to a particular type, but doesn't actually widen the value's type. I'm told there may be edge cases around tuples, but we're not gonna talk about those. Another cool thing uh, in TypeScript, who here has heard of no infer? Wow, I'm legitimately surprised more than two people raised their hand. Let's say you wanted to have a function, get index of, and it's a generic function, meaning it could work on different types. Uh, you wanted to have a values array and a value and you just return the index of. If you were to make the same mistake as before with blue misspelled, you would want a type error. You'd want to make sure that get index of, the first thing is where the types come from and then the second thing is not one of those types. You want to be told if blue is wrong. Let's, I'm going to walk you through the generic type parameter inference algorithm, though. Let's say it's called get index and it returns t. 
If we were to pass it uh, blue feta blue, um, what would TypeScript would do is it would, <laughs> I'm pointing this at the, the back behind me. Oh my God. TypeScript, okay, so it would first look at blue and it would understand, okay, so T might be blue. Then it would look at feta and says, okay, T is either blue or feta, the union. And then it would look at blue and, okay, that's already there. So we know that this one, the type argument is blue or feta. That's how TypeScript works. Cool. If we were to do it with the typo, it would be the same thing. We'd look at blue, we'd add feta there, and then, okay, well, there's another possible T, blue with the misspelling, and that's allowed. That's the current thing. That's how TypeScript works. But we didn't want the way TypeScript works. We wanted something else. We didn't want the second parameter, the values T, to be factored into the type arguments. So what no infer, which is a new built-in type in TypeScript does, is it says don't infer from this. Shush. Shut up about it. So we shut up sh about the blue, which means that type argument isn't inferred, which means we would get a type, uh, a type error for the blue with the typo. Never before have we put so much programming language design and effort into detecting the misspelling of blue cheese. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So use no infer if you don't want a particular parameter's type to change the inference for a type parameter. Okay, cool. I am actually done with the, like, the nitpicky TypeScript stuff now. Let's talk about like, cool tooling built on type TypeScript. TypeScript ES lints, yes, cool. There are a bunch of new linters that are really popular and really awesome, and if any of you who work on those linters like Biome or uh, Dino or OXC are listening, y'all are awesome. The people are writing linters that are written in Rust and that's super cool. And they are working on the following feature, which I'm incredibly excited about. But the following feature is built on TypeScript stuff. Typed linting. Normally, linters just look at your syntax, one file at a time. You declare a variable with a name, and that name is never used. I'm going to give you a lint rule complaint about an unused variable. Love my lint rules. But knowing the types about them is like a new type of linters, where within the spectrum of static analysis, where formatters are one thing we're not talking about, and then linters and type checkers are separate. If we were to be able to combine TypeScript's type information with the traditional linters, we would have what's called a type aware or type checked linter, which can catch some incredible, incredible nuances in your code that would have been really difficult to find otherwise. For example, it could tell you that if you await console.log, that await is unnecessary. Because what happens if you await something that's not a promise or not a venable in JavaScript? Does anyone know? No. Nothing! Have you seen me give this talk before? What? I think you've seen, have you seen me? I think you, you no. all right. No, I, <laughs> okay. okay, yeah, yeah, thanks. He's telling me to go faster. Okay, so nothing happens. <laughs> uh, very politely, thank you, Aris. So let's look at some code. And one of the benefits of linters is that uh, they'll look at your code much faster than you can read it. I'm not giving you enough time to read this function. Uh, this code, but I can see that there's an await there that's unnecessary, which might mean, okay, you should indicate your on click returns promise. Or you could see, okay, wait a second, it really never returns promise, so I can remove the awaits, which means that my running state in React is unnecessary, which means that, you know what, this whole function is unnecessary, which means that I don't need the running state at all, which means button disabled equals running really is just button disabled is false, which is unnecessary because button disabled is false is the same as having no disabled state, which means we were able to get rid of a third of our code with linting. Holy crap, woo! Is that fast enough? Okay. <laughs> so use type checked linting for an incredibly powerful set of rules. I won't show you how to configure that because we don't have three hours, but it's cool stuff. And the last thing I want to show you, I have like two slides left for content, is Knip, which is an awesome new tool. It means cut in Dutch or whatever. Anyway, does anyone see the unused variable in this code? You got two options. Is it banana? Yes, banana is unused. It's used in the file. It's used in fruits to yes. It's exported, but no one else touches it. So if you were to run nip or knip on this set of files, it might yell at you the banana is unused. But it might also yell at you that commander or some other package dependency is unused, which is cool because you weren't even looking at package JSON. There's no way any of us would have known that. But yeah, I see this all the time. I guarantee you, if you have a project that's more than a couple years old and has more than a few hundred files, you have unused code that Knip would catch for you that a linter or type checker would not. Guarantee it, god dang it. All right. So use Knip to find unused stuff. 
Whew, that was fun. I'm gonna show you a few slides that have way too much information on them. I'm not gonna like really take the time for each one. This is the like the take the photo of the slide and then figure stuff out later stuff. I've learned the hard way and been told to do this at the end. So what did we talk about? TypeScript adds type checking and syntax for helping that type checker and stuff and also editor helpers. TypeScript is super configurable. We had that whole line. Um, strict is awesome. It's okay if you can't enable it, but you know, great try. Types are not inferable for thrown stuff because you never know what's gonna throw an error or a string. Uh, satisfies is really cool for helping tell TypeScript what the type of something is without changing the type. And no infer helps you with generics. Um, type check linting is awesome. Uh, use linting in conjunction with other tools such as Knip to find unused code. Cool stuff. All right, so these are the resources. TypeScript, uh, my book, huh? uh, ESLint, TypeScript ESLint, and Knip. I'll have open source stuff for you to visit. That's my talk. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.